Alrighty, guys, let's get some homework done. Um, we've got um, 6-1, and I'm sorry this is taking me a little bit of time to get this done this evening. Um, but we got it done, and, and let's get going. So I've got number 2. Okay, uh, problem number 2 was f of x equals 4x squared. And the instructions were... Um, write the inverse of each function, then give the domain and range of the function and its inverse, restricting the domain and range when necessary so that the inverse is a function. Okay, so let's start out and uh, find out our inverse, okay? Alrighty. So we have y is equal to 4x squared. Now, our first thing is to reverse our x and y, okay? So, we're going to end up with x equals 4y squared, okay? Well, now, we from here, we need to solve for y. So, we're going to first divide by 4, okay? And divide by 4 on the other side. That ends up with x over 4 equals y squared, Okay, now we're going to um, take the square root of both sides. And that gives us y is equal to the square root of x over 2. Because when we take the square root of x over 4, um, we have to take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. Well, the square root of x is just the square root of x. The square root of 4 is 2. So y is equal to um, the square root of x over 2, which we can rewrite as 1 half square root x. Okay, because remember there's 1 in front of that square root of x. So that's 1 over 2. We can split that fraction out and show it as 1 half square root of x. Okay. <coughs> Now, let's uh, do some um, graphing here. All right, let's get some points for the original 4x squared. Okay, and we need our x and our y. And we are going to start with point zero. And when we put zero in for x, multiply that, uh, square that, and then multiply it by four, we get zero. Okay, and then for 1, 1 squared is 1 times 4 gives us 4. 2 squared, um, let's see, 2 squared is 4 times 4 gives us 16. I think that's all we're going to do in here. Um, but we need to make our graphing area a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, fix this here. Okay, there we go. All right, now let's work on the um, one half square root of x. Oh, wait, no, we're going to, let's graph first. Okay, so zero, zero, and then we get the points 1, 4, and negative 1, 4, and then um, 2, 16, oops, let me fix that, there we go, 2, 16, and negative 2, 16. Okay, yes, I don't have it on the T-chart, but I do know that the um, y-axis is our line of symmetry, so it's the same on both sides, so I can reflect it across. Okay, drawing our line here. Now let's do our one-half x, or one-half square root of x. Okay, and get our x and y in there. And remember, we're just reversing the x and y numbers. So we're going to do 0, 0 again. Of course, that's our origin. It's our vertex. Um, then we'll do 4, 1, and then 16, 2. Okay, and again, we will reflect across now the x-axis. Um, 
to put our other uh, the points. So at zero zero, then at four one and negative four one, and at sixteen two and negative sixteen two, and we'll draw in our line. There we go. All right. Now domain and range on the original graph. My graph. As it goes up, it goes out. So my domain is x is such that x is equal to all real numbers. Rewriting that, sorry. Okay, x is such that x is equal to all real numbers. Okay, I apologize. I forgot that I had erased things in there and rewritten it um, so that it was a little more clear for you. Um, now, sorry. My domain. I mean, now we've done the domain. Domain is all the X values. My range um, starts where my graph is at its lowest point. At its lowest point is at zero, and then it goes up. So, range is y is such that y is greater than or equal to zero. That's the zero in our um, vertex. Okay, for our second graph, the domain, okay, x is such that x is greater than or equal to zero. Why? Because it starts at the origin and goes out to the right. Okay, so it's it's greater than and equal to zero. Now our um, range, as our graph goes out to the right, it gets wider. Um, it goes, it'll hit all points up and down. So our range y such that y is equal to all real numbers. Okay, now, it said to limit the domain and range or restrict the domain and range if we need to in order to make the, um, the inverse a function. Okay, well, we've done the um, uh, vertical line test before, and so we know that, um, oops, that gum. The inverse, well, let's just go ahead and do it. Oops, it's not a great line. Um, on the original function, we can see that vertical line tests show, let me do that better. Okay, vertical line test shows that um, we put uh, a line through and it crosses only at one point when we do it on the um, second graph on the inverse we see that um, there is two points here and here where it touches so that is not a function so in order to um, create that um, that function we have to limit our domain so we're going to do it on the positive side of our functions, of, of our graphs. So when we do that, we restrict our domain here. And our new domain is x is such that x is greater than or equal to 0. And that should be reflected in our range for our, our inverse. So now... Our inverse range is y is such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. All right. I think that's got everything that it was needing on that equation. Let's go and do number four. All right. Sorry, that got all messed up. Um, let's try this again. 
Um, number four, um, we started with f of x is equal to the square root of five. Now, this, instead of starting with our um, squared function, it's starting with our square root function. We have to work backwards and find our original function. Now, here's one thing to realize. Um, we started with the square root of x plus 5. That is only the positive side of the square root. Why? Because it doesn't have the negative in front of it. If it doesn't have the negative, we're only going to graph the positive side of the square root, not the negative. Okay? Um, and uh, when we graph the inverse, we will take the positive side of the inverse as well. And we will restrict that domain to show that. Okay, let's, let's do this. Okay, so f of x, let's do y. Y is equal to the square root of X plus 5. And we're going to switch our X and Y. So we have X is equal to the square root of Y plus 5. Now, we need to get rid of that square root before we can get rid of the 5. So I'm going to square both sides. So I now have, because this uh, radical and exponent cancel. I have x squared is equal to y plus 5. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 5. And I end up with y is equal to x squared minus 5. Okay, so this is my hush bin. This is my inverse. Ben hush. Okay, now... Let's, actually, I'm going to change some things here. Um, let's do our x squared, no, 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 no. Let's do our square root of x plus 5 in red. And then in a minute, we'll do our um, 2 squared minus 5 in blue. Um, that way, we're appropriate for graphing. <sighs> okay. Got something on my screen. Ooh. There we go. Now X and we have Y. Okay, so if X is negative five, negative five plus five is 0, and the square root of 0 is 0. And if we go with negative 4, negative 4 plus 5 is, um, negative 4 plus 5 is, um, 1, and the square root of that is 1. Okay, and then let's go with, um, Negative 1, negative 1 plus 5 is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Hush bin. Okay, and then let's see. Um, if we went... Right, so if we went with 4... 4 plus 5 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And then we have um, 11 plus 5 would be 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, so that gives us a few points that we can, we can graph out. Okay, and then let's change our color here back to blue. For our x squared minus 5. And let's get um, an xy t-chart going on it. So we're going to reverse the x and y's, right? So if x is 0, then y is negative 5. Because x squared is 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Um, it, 1 is negative 4. We can prove that. Uh, 1 squared is 1. Minus 5 is negative 4. So we're just going to continue on down to a negative 1, 
3 and 4, 4 and 11. Okay. Now, let's come over here. Draw us a quick graph. Let's see. I need... That should be big enough. Okay, and let's get some points on here. We have negative five zero, so one, two, three, five, right there. Okay, negative four, one, negative one, two, and four, one, two, three, four, three, and then eleven, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, four. There we go. And we'll draw us, oops, draw us in our graph. There we go. Okay. And then let's look at our blue, our inverse graph. So we're going to go down, we're looking at 0, negative 5, so I start at the origin, count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put a point right there, oh, but let's get the right pin, there we go, and then we have 1, negative 4, and 2, negative 1, yep, and... Let's see, we have three, four, here's, oops, three, one, two, three, four, right there. Okay, and then we have four, eleven, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oops, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, there we are. And then draw in our line okay there's our graph now let's look at oh I didn't do this over here um, here we need this when X is greater than or equal to zero that's our restriction on our domain because we only did half the graph we didn't do the whole parabola okay so domain um, for our original function, the, in, the square root of x plus 5, that domain, okay, it starts right here. So, x is such that x, and then it goes out that direction, so is greater than or equal to negative 5. That's the x in our vertex, right? Negative 5, 0. Is, is our vertex, our starting point. Okay. And then our range. Our range starts in uh, the zero at our <coughs> vertex and it goes up. So y is such that y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. And then in our blue, um, for the x squared minus 5, the domain... Okay, remember our numbers switch, and we can tell that because it starts right here. The domain <coughs> starts at zero and goes out. Um, so our x is such that x is greater than or equal to zero. And then our range, okay, this was zero, negative five. So it starts at negative five. Our range is x, or not x, excuse me y is such that y is greater than or equal to negative 5. Alrighty. Alright, and that's all with that problem. Okay, I've skipped number 6. Um, I'm going to let you do that one on your own. Um, I'm going on to number 8. And number 8 and number 10 says graph the function and its inverse on the same coordinate grid. Um, so we're going to graph the whole parabola vertical and horizontal, and um, we don't have to worry about the domain and range, okay? Um, so let's take a look at the first one. 
The first one we have y equals x squared minus 2. Now our first step is to switch the x and y. So we have x equals y squared minus 2. We're going to add 2 to both sides. We get x is or x plus 2 is equal to y squared. We're going to take the square root of both sides. And when we do, we end up with y is equal to the square root of x plus 2. Okay, so that's our inverse. Let's make a t-chart for the original um, uh, function, the y equals x squared minus 2. Okay, and let's make our t-chart for that equation. Alrighty, here we go. So... Let's start with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Um, so if negative 3 is the x, then negative 3 squared is 9 minus 2. Oh, well, it's, I'm sorry. I forgot I started at the, at the origin. I mean, at the, at the 0. So, 0 squared minus 2 would be negative 2. Then we go to 1. 1 squared is 1. Minus 2 is negative 1. So, if 1 is um, negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. Minus 2 is negative 1 as well. Um, 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. We will also get the same answer for negative 2. 3 squared is 9 minus 2 is 7. And negative 3 will get the same thing. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and make our t-chart for um, the square root of x plus 2. Okay, remember we're doing... Um, both sides, we're going to do the full parabola horizontal. Um, so we're switching the x and the y's, okay? Make our t charts here. Alrighty. So our first point, negative 3, 7 becomes 7, negative 3. And we end up with 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, positive 1, positive 2, and positive 2, and then 7 and 3. Okay, now let's do some graphing on um, the original problem. Let's start with our vertex. Okay, so 0, negative 2, we come down 2 from the origin, as you can see. And then we go to 1, negative 1, and negative 1, negative 1. Okay. And then 2, 2, and 2, or negative 2, 2. And then we have 3, 7, and negative 3, 7. And fill in our line. Okay. And then um, let's graph points for um, the square root of x plus 2. So, our, or, our uh, vertex starts at negative 2, 0. And then um, we go to um, negative 1, 1, and negative 1, negative 1. Then we go to 2, 2, and ne 2, negative 2. And then we go to 7 and 3 and 7 and negative 3. And fill in our line and our arrows. And that's for problem number 8. And that's all that they have asked us to do. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Alrighty. Number 10. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this one for you um, because it's got a fraction in it. And I wanted to just walk through it with you. Um, also, you will notice that this one is not squared. It is a linear function. Okay, so let's take a look. 
So first thing we're going to do is we're going to reverse x and y. So x is equal to 2 thirds y plus 4. We need to clear out everything from around the y so that we can solve for y. So we're going to start with um, getting rid of that 4. So we subtract 4 from both sides. That leaves us with x minus 4 equals 2 thirds y. Now we're going to multiply both sides by 3 halves because to get rid of the 2 thirds, I multiply it by its inverse so that it becomes a 1. Okay, so we're going to multiply, okay, 3 halves times x minus 4 is equal to 3 halves times 2 thirds y. Okay, and that gives me 2, or 3, excuse me, 3 halves times x minus 4 is equal to y and we see that because um, we can cancel out those threes um, when we look um, diagonally and then we can cancel out our twos or reduce them not cancel but reduce um, when we're multiplying and dividing okay um, now we're going to distribute three halves to the x and to the negative four okay so we have three halves x minus 3 times 4 is 12 divided by 2 times 1 is 2 equals y. So for the inverse, that gives us y is equal to 3 halves x minus 12 divided by 2 is 6. So there's our... Um, our uh, inverse function. Okay, let's graph these out, okay? All right, get our graph drawn in there. Now let's start plotting some points. For our original uh, equation, um, I have a, um, as we can, uh, as we know, linear is y equals mx plus b. Um, the m, the two-thirds, is our slope. The four is our y-intercept. So we're going to go up from the origin um, four units and put our point and then we're going to count up to and over three and put a point and do that again and again and we'll go back down the other way a little bit okay let's do one more up here a couple more there we go kind okay, of drawing our line there we go and put some arrows all right, so that took care of our original function, um, our original linear function, 2x plus 4. Now let's uh, plot out the um, beginning for our inverse. Um, you can see that our y-intercept is negative 6. So I'm going to go to the origin, and I'm going to count down 6, and I'm going to put a point. Then I have a slope now of 3 halves, so I'm going to count up 3 and over 2. And I'm going to do this repeatedly for several times. So up 3 and over 2, up 3 over 2, up 3 over 2, and do that again. And we see that our lines cross, and I'm going to draw in the line and some arrows. And there we go. There's our graph. Okay, all right, good deal. Okay, let's look at number 12. Number 12 says, use composition to show that f and g are inverse functions. So we have the f of x that is 3x squared. The domain is limited to x is greater than 0, so that's all the positive sides. And then um, g of x is equal to the square root of x um, over 3. Okay, so let's write this out. Um, we're going to do f of g of x first, Okay, where the g of x is the x in the f of x. So f of x is equal to 3x 
squared. Okay? And that means f of x is equal to 3 times g of x squared. Okay? Now let's fill in the equation square root of x over 3 for our g of x. Okay, so f of x equal to 3 times the square root of x over 3 squared. Okay, um, our radical and exponent cancel each other out. And we are left with f of x is equal to 3 times x over 3. Um, our 3's reduce, and I am left now with f of x is equal to x. Okay. Good, that's what we were looking for, right? Alright, let's see if g of f comes out the same. So, g of f of x. Okay, so our g of x is equal to the square root of x over 3. Okay, so we're going to place that x with f of x. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to replace the f of x with the equation 3x squared. So g of x is equal to the square root of 3x squared over 3. Okay, well, I can see pretty quickly that my 3's are going to reduce. And I am left with g of x is equal to the square root of x squared. Of course, we know that radicals and exponents can cancel each other out. And we have g of x is equal to x. All right, so we ended up with x and x. So that means, yes, these are inverse equations. All right, last one, number 14. Um, a is equal to 4 times pi times the square root of, I mean, not the square root, but 4. Let's try that again. Area equals 4 pi r squared. Okay, and so it says that the function a equals, or area equals 4 times pi times the radius squared relates to the area of a sphere in meters squared to the radius of the sphere. And it asks us to find the inverse of the function. Okay, um, this is like our uh, diverse problem that we had. Okay, so um, we're not switching the area and the radius. Um, what we are doing is trying to find the square root equation um, instead of the squared equation. So we're just going to solve for r. <coughs> okay, so we start by um, dividing by everything that the radius is multiplied by. So it's multiplied by 4 and by pi. Um, so, and I'm going to have to do that again. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have to take 4 pi, and that's what I'm going to divide by. Divide by 4 pi. Okay. So that leaves us with area over 4 pi is equal to radius squared. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I end up with radius is equal to the square root of area over 4 pi. And that's all we need to do. Okay, and that finishes out our